Hello there fellow acolytes of Sega Saturn and welcome to another Runes video. In this series I take a look at Japanese games for the Saturn and evaluate how easy they are for English speakers. This time we're going to dive into Akamojo Dracula X, more commonly known as Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I'm not going to go into details as to why this was released exclusively in Japan, since I went over that in my gems video. Instead, I'll just get straight into the analysis. So here we go. Soon as you enter the game, you can see that you have the title of the game in Japanese, but then press start button in English. And all the options appear to be in English too. You click on Game Start. Again, mostly in English. I believe at the bottom left that's just a translation of what you're seeing in English. So you've got data delete, copy, name change, data select. We're just going to dive into data select. This one seems to be a little bit more complicated, but nothing too major. Again, you can see you've got different save files. They'll, as standard, just say no data, and then when you click on one, you write the name. Let's click on, let's click on a blank one first. Uh, let's just call it Roots. So, fairly simple. You've got the name of the characters or in English. Let's do Maria just for the sake of this. Everything seems to be relatively straightforward so far. The enemy names that appear at the bottom are in Japanese, but that's not really too important. And your HUD's fairly simple to work out based on what you see. As you've noticed from the money, items you pick up appear at the bottom left. Now, money of course is no issue, but then some other more complicated items are going to appear in Japanese. So now I'm going to exit and go into Alucard. Playing as Alucard is pretty similar. As you can see, it's pretty much the same as with Maria. Pick up an item, it's in Japanese. If I go into the start menu, we can see that it's relatively straightforward. Most of the details are in English. You've got things like level, status, which the status is in English too. So if you're poisoned, it says poison. You've got your details about your health, your magic, your hearts, strength, and intelligence, and so on and so forth. So relatively straightforward. Then you have these five options, which are all in Japanese. We'll start from the bottom. These are your familiars. The names of them are in Japanese. Everything else seems to be pretty much in English. Interestingly, the two familiars that are exclusive to the Japanese version say level and experience in Japanese. But the other one, it says level and experience in English. That's a very strange thing. And I don't know why they decided to do that. But whatever. Next one up, we have this menu, all in Japanese. Click on it, and you can see certain things. I mean, this looks like an options menu. It seems to tell you certain things, but it's very Japanese, so there's nothing much you can really get from that. The next one, these are all your special items. You have like a little picture to give you an indication, like you can see that these are the bat powers, for example. And then, like, this is, I don't know, probably the double jump. This snorkel is breathing underwater. Uh, the cards are for your familiars. And, yeah, you do have some other things. For the most part, because everything's in Japanese, it's quite difficult. If you've never played the game before, then you won't have a clue what any of these do. And that can be tough. If you've played the game before, you'll probably have a brief idea about what some of them do. But to be honest, you're probably going to need a translation guide to figure out exactly what each thing does. This is your spell list, which honestly, even though it's in Japanese, isn't a massive issue. It shows you the spell combinations and all you really have to do is just pull it off and you can see what it does. Finally, we have the item menu. Now, the item menu is a little bit difficult to use. So if we click on this, you will see the uh, stats on the right changing. 
So for example, if I choose this, my attack goes up to 102. Both A and C, which are my weapon slots, both go up to 102, so it's a double-handed weapon. And then others go down and what have you. Similarly, if I click on the helmet, you can see things like my defense changing, my intelligence changing as well. Same with the other things. Stats change based on what you have selected. And the same with the items. You can get a general idea about what some of the stuff do based on how it changes your stats, but you can't see any secondary things that they do. This is a problem. And again, you'll probably want a translation guide to figure out what some of them do. Some will be apparent just by equipping it, others not so much. As for the gameplay itself, as you can probably see, there's nothing too special here. It's a platforming action game and as such the language isn't a massive issue. Even like the text between the characters during the story bits are kind of incidental. The good thing is that the story in Castlevania is pretty much just, here's Dracula, kill Dracula. There's a little bit more story to it with Richter Belmont and Maria, but it still kind of boils down to the same basic Castlevania formula. So the question is, do I recommend the game? If you've played this game before, I would probably say yes, because you're going to know what to do anyway just from having played it previously. If you've not played the game before, then I would still say it's worth playing, just purely because if you use a translation guide, it's not too difficult to go through. You're just going to have to use the translation guide when it comes to things like picking up items and relics and things like that. Even though the game is not perfect for English speakers, because it does contain some Japanese you will need a translation guide for, it's still relatively minimal enough that if you want to pick up the game, you're going to be able to play through it no problems. As such, I would happily give this game my recommendation as a pickup. Well, I hope this video has helped you make a decision as to whether this is playable or not in Japanese. I would certainly say it is. It's quite an expensive game, but if you're a fan of Castlevania and Sega Saturn, it's definitely worth picking up. Until next time, bye.